Welcome back to this tutorial series on implementing numerical methods in Python. And in today's video, we're going to be going over adaptive composite Simpsons rule. But before we begin, we're going to give some thought into why this uh, method is needed to begin with. So here we have our original composite Simpsons rule from the last video. And we have our new function here. And so it is given as follows, 4 times x to the third times cosine of x minus 9 times x squared times e to the negative x plus 7x plus 3. So here we have uh, an extremely hard and intricate uh, integrand to uh, derive by hand. We're going to integ integrate from 0 to 10. And it has the approximate uh, value of negative 2646.21764. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, call our composite Simpsons rule with the following uh, end steps. So we're going to start at 4, and we're going to double. So we're going to go from 4 to 8 to 16, 32, 64, 180, excuse me, 128, 256, uh, 512. And we're going to see how uh, these different end steps match up. So here we have our first uh, end step of 4 is nowhere close to the approximate integral. It is uh, negative 416. However, when we double to 8, we get extremely close. Uh, negative 2,617, so we're off by, by about 20. We double again, now we're off by one, we double again, and we're a little bit off, we keep on doubling, and eventually we reach the, uh, a good enough value to accept. So at n equals 512 is where you would stop this problem. And as we can see here, um, if we can't derive our integrand by hand, we're not gonna know the actual value. And so simply just choosing an n that's large enough is uh, not a very precise way and a good way to approximate an integral. So, and I'm going to show you guys exactly why this happened. So here we have the graph of the, our function. And we can see here it is oscillatory. Uh, and I can zoom in. And simply we want to, we're integrating this function from 0 to 10 where this uh, red is the positive area and the blue represents the negative area. And so if we were to actually uh, increase this, we would probably have to increase our end value as well. And we can see why. Uh, it is extremely oscillatory and it spans an extremely high distance. And so what we can do here is we can actually break this down into multiple composite Simpsons rules. So the purpose of the adaptive Simpsons rule is to simply call uh, our function a composite Simpsons rule on smaller intervals and we simply compare to see if these intervals line up with each other. And now I'm going to uh, actually go into the uh, intricacies of this method. So here we have our adaptive composite Simpsons rule. It is known as a recursive function for splitting the integral interval into smaller pieces. This is how it works. First, it splits the interval into two sections, then it compares the area, uh, the estimated areas of each section versus the estimated area of the total section, excuse me, of the total in interval. If they differ by selected tolerance, then they subdivide the interval and repeats the process. So here I found a, a nice little picture online. So adaptive simply refers to the fact that it recursively splits the integral in half, checking the uh, error term compared to some desired maximum value. So here uh, we have an example, right? We divide our uh, interval into two parts. We calculate the area of this section and the area of this section. Now, then what we do is we calculate the area of the total section. And we see, we check the difference. We say, if this value plus this value is any uh, such different than this, then we need to split our interval into smaller parts. This way, uh, we don't have to necessarily check the end value. It simply just does it for us. And even though this is done recursively, this can also be used uh, non-recursively. And so I'm actually going to give a non-recursive uh, implementation of this uh, in Python. So to begin with, we're gonna say def adaptive composite Simpsons. We're going to give it our function, our tolerance, and our interval a to b. But before we begin, we're going to actually import. So we're going to say from composite Simpsons 
import composite Simpsons. So we're going to import our composite Simpsons rule from the previous episode, as we see here. I'm going to delete this. So we don't need any of this anymore. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a stack. So we're going to say stack is equal to an empty list, stack.append, our a value, stack.append, our b value. And we're simply going to use the stack to append the uh, values for our, our intervals. We're going to get our, our i value. And i simply, as we see here, is denoted as the sum. So what we're going to do here is each time we subdivide our interval into smaller uh, sections, once we find a, a, an appropriate interval that's a, appropriate for the given tolerance, we add that to our i value. So we add this value to our i, then we add this value to our i, until we get all the way through, and then we return our i value. So uh, treat i simply as the sum of the interval. Our iterations. So we're going to say while the length of our stack is not zero, which basically means is not empty. So we're going to keep on going until our stack is empty. We are going to pop off the stack our B interval. We're going to pop off the A. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get uh, what's known as the i1 value. So we're going to split our function here into two parts. We're going to, i1 is simply going to be the value of the entire interval. And we're going to uh, go from a to bb of n equals 4. So we're going to have four subdivisions in our composite Simpsons rule. And now we're going to calculate our m, which is aa plus bb divided by 2. i2 is simply going to be our function of aa to m, which is going to be aa to m of 4 plus the other half of the function interval from m to bb of 4. So now we split our function in half we calculate both areas and we compare them. But first, let's update our iteration. And we compare it, we compare uh, these two values using the following statements. We're going to say if absolution of i2 minus i1 divided by 15 is less than bb minus aa times our tolerance. So if this value is true, then simply what we do is we add this to our i. So if uh, there's no need to decompose our interval into a smaller uh, subsection, we just simply add our i2 value, which is both of these integrals to our i. If it's not, then what we do is we simply we need to uh, decompose this section into a smaller piece. By doing that, what we need to do is our append m stack dot append bb stack dot append aa stack dot append m. And so simply what's happening is for the first iteration, let's say we append A, we append BB, excuse me, we append B, we pop off B, which is known as BB, then we pop off A, which is known as AA, and let's say this fails. So what we do here is we have our interval, we append M to the stack, then we append BB, AA, and then M. So the next time we call, this BB function is going to get M, which is going to be the mid, and then uh, this a, a call, this pop, is going to return A. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go from A to M. And then we need to see, is this subsection uh, good enough to where we don't have to subdivide again? If, it's, uh, if it is, then the next time we call, it's going to be BB to M, which is going to be this part. 
So then we need to check uh, this subsection. And so simply we're going to subdivide all the sections uh, using a form of recursion. However, in this example, we can use a stack instead of a recursive algorithm. So the last thing we need to do is we need to say, if our iteration is over a thousand, then we need a break and we're going to say 1,000 iterations reached. And this simply occurs uh, sometimes in functions that are not well defined. And we can actually uh, decrease the chance of this happening by increasing this n value. So if you play around, uh, if you have a maximum iterations reached, then simply increase to let's say eight on, both, on all these, and it would actually decrease this value. By increasing our n value, we are uh, increasing the number of nodes, which will increase our accuracy, but at the same time, it can decrease our accuracy for uh, long intervals, and it will also increase uh, the time taken to approximate, uh, excuse me, uh, the time taken to uh, compute the values. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna say print iterations needed string of our iter and we're going to return our i which is simply the sum of the interval so now what we can do is we can test this out so going back to our previous example and given in the previous video we needed an n value of 512 i believe to actually approximate this value to four decimals however let's see what would happen if we now use our adaptive composite Simpsons rule. So we're going to say our, we're going to print our adaptive composite Simpsons rule, pass in our function. Our interval is from 0 to 10. And our tolerance, let's actually make our tolerance here, the very last step, excuse me, parameter of 1 e to the negative 10. So let's print this out and return i break seems to have a problem. I need to actually uh, run the correct Python script for this to work. So we needed only three iterations and we here we have negative 2645 and so we're off by a little bit. Oh, I, I can see why now. This needs to be E, not 3. So we have uh, 1,000 iterations reached. And so we can actually check and see how even uh, adaptive composite Simpsons rule is not an appropriate function for approximating this integral uh, for a tolerance of 1E to the negative 10. What we can do is we can actually adjust this. So let's say six instead. And so we needed only 159 iterations. And so our function is approximate to uh, six decimal places. Let's see what would happen if we made this eight instead. 455 iterations and nine would be 833 iterations. So we can see here that uh, our function is uh, pretty, pretty robust. Uh, unfortunately, we can't handle, for this particular example, anything uh, with extreme precision, such as 1e to the negative 10. However, 1e to the negative 9 is an extreme, uh, extremely accurate. That is 1 times 10 to the negative 9. So we're, we're only, uh, our, we're, excuse me, our approximate value is only off by 1 times e to the negative 9. And we could have probably even adjust this by even making our maximum iterations even higher. However, in this example, there's not necessarily uh, a reason to, to do so. So hopefully you guys have uh, learned from this video uh, the power of adaptive composite Simpsons rule and how to apply it and using, uh, use it in actual functions. So stay tuned for future videos.